try this out of vlogging by street light. I don't know how it's gonna work what we're actually gonna see. Uh, that's better but uh, still I think uh, vlogging by street light is gonna have to <laughs> be something for the future. So you can see me you can see me here now but uh, anyways uh, I just finished food shopping uh, there's no way to do a pair of protectors because it's too dark out. Uh, particularly when coming into, tre into trees. So, anyways, we'll see how this comes out. It's about... Uh, when I checked the time, it was uh, 20 hours and 16 minutes into the day of Tuesday, September 13, 2016. That was... Oh, five, six minutes ago, so let's say it's uh, uh, 20 hours and 20 minutes into the day of uh, Wednesday, no, Tuesday, September 13th, 2016. Uh, uh, the delivery that I was waiting for, uh, here we go, that's actually better. Oh, then there comes the tree again. See, when, you're, when there are trees cover, covering the lights, you can vlog by street light, but then the, when, the street, when the trees cover the vlog, Cover the, cover the lamp you know, in the shadow can't be seen so that's the thing uh, <laughs> let's try it no I, I, I don't know. what do you think what do you, which is better this way or this way well that's much better well, there's some lights in the background that will cause problems but uh, <laughs> find the right thing to do uh, while you're walking uh, anyways, the uh, micro SD chips came in, so that's uh, that, and now it's on to the rest of the schedule. I'm going to try to pick up my schedule again, and make sure some of the stuff that had fallen off the schedule because I had lost that SD card is now put back on properly, and we get some of the extra work done that needs to be done. So let's try this. Uh, the security lights here are pretty good. <laughs> Logging by security lights at night. Uh, yeah, anyways, I didn't need anything from the mall over there. So, I'm just going to go past it and maybe we'll be able to get some light there to vlog. But right now I'm crossing the street and I need my attention because it's dark. So, see you in a bit. Alrighty, welcome back to the next segment of the Big Bang Theory, Big Bang Theory L's BTS vlog. Trying something new. Give me time and date, uh, time and date stamp first. It is just about 40 minutes into the day of uh, Wednesday, September 14th, 2016. Yeah, um, as I said before, I've switched up my uh, how I'm filming because I found a tripod that is light enough and small uh, and folds up compact enough to fit in my backpack. My new, I've got a new backpack and uh, I got it for 10 bucks. It was a tiny little thing. Uh, it's designed for kids. It's actually a kid's backpack. Uh, and um, it does the job. It, and it fits a laptop in there. It fits the tripod in here. And so I was trying out this new, the new method of, of filming. And I, look, hands-free, because <laughs> I've got a tripod now, and I can easily set this up. It comes right out of my backpack, sets up the tripod. It's good enough for the height. Uh, I'm satisfied with the height and everything, so uh, yay for that, because uh, I now have a means of hands-free, uh, hands hands-free 
means of uh, filming. So, <laughs> in terms of filming myself, I don't have because I said before, you know, if you, the, a lot of the tripods are, were bulky and heavy. This is very, very light. You don't even notice it's in the backpack, and um, it, it allows me to, to, to do more types of filming like this. So, uh, I think I'm going to be using this a lot more than I did because it was very easy to set up. It wasn't, didn't take me time much. It took me about uh, less than. It took me less than 30 seconds to set the whole thing up. So, uh, that is not a lot of time when you consider that there are other things that could take more time than that. So, it's, I don't mind the 30 seconds. I walk everywhere. So, uh, that takes, like, my, my, my hiking takes uh, close to three hours. And so, 30 seconds? Who cares? It's 30 seconds. So, um, this is our new new tripod system now. This is the new, new way we're going to going to be filming so you're not going to see the handshakes anymore uh, well in case unless I'm walking you know, we're doing the peripatetics and that way I have no option but the but to use the uh, smaller tripod uh, that oh. allows the legs to be folded together and used it as a tri as a monopod so I can actually film myself back and forth uh, film myself so it's, it'd be more along the lines of a selfie but uh, uh, yeah, I'm outside right now, uh, waiting for a new system. Well, the new system has already come in. Uh, I've, been, I've, been, I've been tracking it since about, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, a new system on uh, the GO system. The, uh, the GO system is the uh, satellite system uh, from NOAA that uh, allows you to view various types of different types of weather events. Uh, I have a continental view, and I have a hemispherical view, uh, so I can sort of... Uh, take these images, you put them together as a movie, and uh, you can sort of track what's going on in the sky. So I come out here, so okay, uh, does what I see on the goals match up with what I see up there. Uh, once I do have a good representation of that, I can then go into, look into and see, understand some of the mecha mechanisms that are going on in there. Uh, and that's sort of what I have been doing. And so far, most of the stuff seems to be tracking north of us, the, the storms. Uh, again, this is something that moved into uh, the uh, sort of diagonal that goes from the tropic oh, up to Greenland. And it cuts its avenue through Lake uh, through the Great Lakes. And because um, Toronto's on, on, on one side of Lake Ontario, and we are part of Lake, uh, the, the Great Lakes system, uh, the storms that come up from the tropics track through us, and that way we're able to. I'm able to sort of sit in between here and say, "Okay, uh, that's what that's going." I, I have a, a directional, uh, a, a directional ability with this, uh, with where I'm sitting, because where I'm sitting and basically just sort of right ahead of me is north, behind me is south, to the right is east, and to the east, to the left is west. So it's a very natural setting, so I can easily see and determine direction and uh, so I can also determine uh, which way the wind is blowing uh, also sometimes in this case here because I'm in a spot where the wind blows in two directions it blow, blow east and west uh, I'll see the wind from the southeast should I say from the southwest will come in hot and humid the wind from the northwest comes in cold and the wind from the north east comes in cold as well. So I have two sources of cold, one source of one source of hot, and you can sort of see how the systems interact with each other. I can sort of see even here at night. I can sort of see uh, with my eyes. I can see the clouds. And some of the clouds have a uh, luminosity to them. And I'm actually going to be filming some of the, the some of the cloud uh, in, in a few minutes. Because you can actually see the moon behind the cloud. You can actually see some of the uh, interaction between the clouds. And because, because the way the moon shines off the cloud, it, it turns the clouds luminescent. And this, lu this luminescence allows you to sort of uh, film at night. Then on the editing desk, bring, bring up the contrast. And that brings out the actual clouds. So you can actually film at night. You can do the video the videography at night. And you can start studying even at night. Uh, the interaction between various different forms of clouds uh, and sort of see what's going on, what's not going on and sort of match it up with some of the uh, understandings and physics that you have. And as I said before, uh, there are some anomalies, I'm tracking anomalies. And this is sort of, I, I got into this a, a few years ago 
essentially just looking at the satellite because I, I was interested in sort of seeing what's on the satellite and I know the physics of it so I sat down and started looking at the physics of it and started comparing it to what I saw uh, from the solar observatories, the SOHO observatory uh, that's in space and began to see correlations between uh, what was going on uh, in the uh, interact uh, going on with the sun, the, uh, the solar activity and how the solar activity has an impact, I'll say it this way, has an impact on the uh, atmosphere here on Earth. And so I began studying that and looking up, uh, looking up the information on this and sort of uh, doing my own observations and began to say, okay, okay, this is this, this is that. And, you know, you go look for your standard information first and before you then if there are things you see that don't match the standard information or or call textbook textbooks uh, understanding, then these are where your knowledge, this is what requires further study, this is what requires uh, further observation, and you set your observation, you set your uh, research down that path because that's where you want to go. If you're an explorer, you go want to go down the path that it's unknown. And so you look for the things that are known, aren't known uh, as compared to the things that are known and when you see the stuff that's not known, then you start going down that path and say, okay, well, what am I possibly seeing? And that's where you bring out your physics, okay, well, how does this behave and how should this behave in physics? What am I seeing? Does it match up with something? If you can match it up with something, even loosely, say, okay, this is what it might appear. So I have images I'll be showing uh, in about a week or so. I'll be putting together the first vlog for the Or vlog. And one of the things I'll be showing in there from the satellite is actually uh, uh, sections of the atmosphere that behave, the, the gas actually, instead of behaving as a liquid, uh, behaves as a solid. It actually behaves as, as a solid chunk and moves like a solid chunk. And the atmosphere around it actually behaves like a fluid. It, 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 in other words, you don't have a pure fluid when you're talking about the atmosphere. In other words, the behavior is not a pure fluid dynamics. And because, you know, under fluid dynamics, things that flow, this includes heat and thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is a form of fluid dynamics. Uh, you can apply uh, fluid dynamics to a gas. You can apply it to a liquid, because it is. So anything that flows can be applied to fluid dynamics. This is a form of physics. Uh, when I began looking at it, one of the anomalies, as I said, that I found, and I've been trying to get an explanation for this, is the sort of rigidity, the, the uh, rigid body mechanics that I'm seeing with clouds as well. That is not, this is not uniform. It's not a uniform behavior. There seems to be a mixture, and this is what leads me to believe that uh, uh, some of the things that has to be brought into this is boundary layer physics. And this will have to, I'll have to go back and brush up on I know I know about boundary layer physics, but I need to find more examples of boundary layer physics and start reading up on it a little bit more uh, before I make a determination with what is is what I'm seeing boundary layer physics. Is there something uh, like, like the boundary layer physics, or is there something more complex going on where you have a hybridization between a fluid and a rigid, rigid mechanic system? So. Or, or rigid dynamics. So this is called, instead, of, instead of we're calling it fluid dynamics, we'll call it rigid dynamics. Rigid, but uh, instead of we usually call it rigid mechanics, uh, rigid body physics, because you're talking about a solid body. So let's call it uh, just the rigid, the rigid body, uh, rigid uh, dynamics, fluid dynamics, rigid dynamics, and we're seeing both the fluid and the rigid. Uh, in the sky, I've seen them in the clouds, I've seen it on the satellites, I've got multiple confirmations of this. Now it's a matter of starting to bring it out, taking notes on this, it, taking my ad hoc notes, organizing them, uh, and getting a better understanding of what I typically have. Anyways, I'm going to leave this here for now, and I will see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory Alls BTS Vlog. Alright, take it easy. Well, hello everybody, welcome back to the next segment of Big Bang Theory Alls BTS vlog. That's right, it's uh, just about uh, 45 minutes, yeah, zero hours and 45 minutes into the day of Thursday, September uh, 15th, uh, 2016. And uh, yeah, it's a rather cold night out tonight. I'm out <laughs> for observations again. Um, I was expecting a, a system of warm air to come up and, and, and hit us uh, from uh, you know the the uh, diagonal line from Mexico 
but uh, it seems to see that there is a uh, from what I've viewed on the satellite that there is a uh, what I would call a, um, a cold vortex now typically you have hurricanes hurricanes are produced by heat this vortex seems in the the, the vortex the, the vortices I've seen before seem to be surrounding the cold they're cold vortices they, they they bring in a lot of cold air with them and they actually have a rotation to them so on the satellite, you actually see this vortex. You see this uh, uh, system that moves across the. Uh, either, usually, it's usually up. It's up in Alaska. That's where I see. It. It's, it's, these are usually polar. So you can see them up in Alaska. You can see them up uh, uh, over the Hudson's Bay, uh, over in the uh, North Atlantic, uh, particularly where Greenland is around there. Uh, this is where you see them. All right. So. Uh, it is unusual to see it though at a lower at a lower point, uh, and it usually indicates that something's cooling uh, rather than heating up. So in other words, we're having an indication of cooling, uh, and that's actually what we're experiencing here in Toronto. We were actually having this sort of cooling effect, to bring this cooling, the whole cooling effect is coming in here. Normally, uh, it shouldn't be as cold. It's about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the temperature is dropping. It should probably go down to about 50 degrees tonight. Uh, so we are getting some very cold, very frigid temperature. We've had this now for, for the last couple of days. Uh, we haven't... Uh, uh, the daytime highs maybe got up to, I think it was like 65 degrees, not even, today. So same thing tomorrow. Tomorrow they say the high is going to be around uh, 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So, and I think I said before. I'm going to sort of explain the Fahrenheit scale, why the Fahrenheit scale is a better human scale. In other words, when you're doing research, you're doing work, you want to try to identify or use a scale that is appropriate for whatever you're doing. And it's not simply enough to say, oh, well, this is a scientific thing. Excuse me. And that's it, because you have to set your standards. You have to set your, and this is not a, a standard in terms of, wow, that's certainly not up to my standard. It's not an issue of quality. It's an issue of when you're uh, measuring something, you need to have some degree of, particularly if, if you're doing it from the human perspective, you need to have some degree of relation with them. And I typically prefer scales where you have room to move. In other words, that the graduations, the uh, the lines of measurement between one tick and another aren't large, and in the Celsius system, the the the, t the, the differences between the ticks, you, that, those are your graduations, right? The differences between uh, 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 ten degrees Celsius, fifteen degrees Celsius, right? Uh, well. 20 degrees Celsius is close to 80 degrees. 30 degrees Celsius is, is even higher than that. And, 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 so, and, and then even 10 degrees, so 10 degrees is about 60. 20 degrees is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And so you have a huge range uh, with, with, on the, the, that you're dealing with in terms of the ticks, in terms of your graduation, uh, on the Celsius scale. You, it's not as flexible. And the thing is, zero degrees Celsius isn't the freezing point of water. 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the freezing point of water. So, since we are a water-based system in our bodies, in the atmosphere, it, sen it makes sense to use a thermal scale, a temperature scale, that is based on water. And that's what Fahrenheit does. Water Fahrenheit gives us a water scale from our observational point of view because we're not doing chemistry. There's no need to go into cells because we're not really dealing with things outside of this initial sort of call uh, uh, life band of uh, water material, water temperatures. So because we're not dealing with something like that, we're not really going above 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, there's no need to bring in the Celsius scale. Celsius is great for chemistry. If you're doing, you know, chemical equations and stuff like that, Celsius is great. But when you're dealing with something on a human level, you're trying to see how cold the air is. Uh, if there's a wind chill effect that's going on, then the Fahrenheit scale, because of its water sensitivity, is actually the better scale to use. So, I even use even if you want to prevent well uh, 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 pipes from freezing in your house, then that's you set your place at 55 degrees. You go below 55 degrees, and there, there's there is a chance that there'll be cold spots in your house cold enough that will cause your pipes to freeze. 
because you're dealing with you know 32 degrees is the, is the freezing point of water. That's the point when your when your pipes the water in your pipes start to freeze, and then of course when it thaws out, the water the uh, the pipe is cracked, and now you have a leak, and it could be a sizable one and uh, cause significant amount of water damage to the house. So uh, as I said, if you're looking at a water temperature, uh, a, a water centered temperature scale then Fahrenheit is the one you want to use so this is why I use Fahrenheit out here out here uh, yeah so th these vortices and this is something that I knew that I've been sort of looking at um, really drive a lot of the weather they, 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 the thing is even the 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 the, the, uh, the, the humidity the moisture that moves between the uh, Oh. The equator, the tropical systems, and the North Pole are all centered on these vortices, and it's like it, you can either say they're being pulled into the vortex, or there is some mechanism that sort of they know where the vortex is. I, I would tend to say that, say, if, and, and this is what I know from my understanding of physics, this my understanding of chemistry. If the tropics are hot, the poles are cold. It would make sense that you have lower pressure up at the poles and higher pressure, uh, atmospheric pressures at the equator. So as that happens, you uh, begin to have a move from the hot to the cold and a high pressure to a low pressure zone. And they seem to sort of everything sort of seems to track by track along with this. And I do have to look at this more. I do have to, as I'm, I am building a uh, means of uh, sort of changing my methods of, of data collection. So I'm getting a closer look at the things that need to be done. Before I was doing, when I was coming out here, I was doing a three hour um, uh, data pull. Every I'd, I'd, go, I'd be out here every three hours, I go inside, pull the data, and see where things were. And now I realize I need to do that two, every two hours. Uh, and so that's what I've been doing is every two hours I, I come out here uh, between 8 and 9 o'clock in the evening. Uh, I've done a data pull at 8, do a data pull at 10, a data pull at 12. Uh, now it's just about 1 o'clock, so I won't do the next data pull until about 2 o'clock in the morning. And that's kind of how the, uh, the, the mechanism, how, this is how the sort of the methodology actually ends up working itself out, is that you allow the environment, okay, you, you, pull one set of you pull one set of information, you have one methodology. Is that methodology giving you enough information, or do you need to do more? And that's what we it can actually take a month or two months of pulling the data at, at a particular rate before you can say, okay, yeah, I need to pull, start pulling data at a faster rate, or... Maybe I'm pulling data too much. I'm pulling too much of it out. Uh, I can pull back a bit. But it takes, takes about a month, month and a half of worth of data before you can make any sense out of it and try to say, okay, yeah, this is too much, this is too little, or I'm just just about right. It seems to be from what I've experienced before, uh, from my previous experience, that I am pulling uh, two hours is the right interval. Uh, I'm seeing uh, uh, changes that I didn't notice before within the two hours. Uh, and so these are things that I've, I've taken note of. They're in my ad hoc notes. But I do have to watch them. I said I'll have to watch them for another month or so to see whether or not, uh, with with this new data pull now with that two hours, to see whether or not I'm getting something more significant and to understand better what's actually happening with some of the features that I'm now seeing, as compared to what I wasn't seeing before, as compared to what I was seeing before. So um, that's kind of where we are. Uh, <laughs> I said, I don't expect this vlog to be very popular. I think this is uh, more of a geek thing. Uh, I, get, I get low numbers in terms of my viewership, but that's all right. It doesn't bother me at all. Uh, anyways, uh, that's it for tonight. I think I'll leave it here, and I will see you guys in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory. Uh, Big Bang Theory's Big Bang Theory RL's BTS vlog. All right, take it easy. Welcome back to the next segment of Big Bang Theory L's BTS Vlog. Yes, it is 18 hours and 24 minutes into the day of Friday, September 16th, 2016. And this is the last peripatetics that you will see on the BTS Vlog. Why? We're not canceling it, we're moving it. It's grown up. 
it's going to be, I just filmed the intro to uh, a new show called Meditations. It's going to be on Bass TV. Uh, it's a Byzantine Antiquity Studies uh, TV. And, um, yeah, it will be a, way, a new way to explore meditation. Uh, to look at all of the various different forms. Uh, I have my own particular type. But I'm not going to force anyone into my way. There's nothing to buy, nothing to sell. So, you know, it'll be an open and free platform to view and discuss meditation. And it's called meditation for a particular reason. Because there's more than one type of meditation. Because meditation simply means to think, to ponder. In other words, a philosophy like this one here, like basically the philosophy is like Aristotle, were, were people who did meditation. Why? Because they thought, they pondered. This here, which is based on Aristotle's work of peripatetics, walking and thinking, walking and talking, having these discussions, is part of philosophy. And that's part of philosophy, or type of philosophy, is a type of meditation. So, what better way to uh, introduce, because I had a problem trying to introduce uh, meditations to try to sort of bring the new show about, I really couldn't think of an opening theme, or an opening idea, and well, I was walking today, I said, well, I'm going to do peripatetics again, because I just did it a few days ago, went shopping, I said, well, let's bring this into uh, meditations, so, I recorded the uh, first episode of Meditations uh, doing peripatetics, so <laughs> that's where you're going to see it. The thing is, where do I have to go for this? Nowhere. Because if you look at the blog spot, the, the uh, Cyborg Alpha TV Network uh, blog spot, right? Go there, at the Cyborg Alpha TV Network uh, uh, blogspot.com. Well, everything's going to be posted there. That's it. All the channels, all the shows one place. Anyways, it's time for me to cross this rush hour. There's a good traffic that I have to pay attention to. Now normally, if I'm here, uh, vehicles are supposed to stop for me, but they're not stopping. See, this is the dangerous part here. This bus was in the lane, they're trying to get over it, now there are cars behind him. If I had gone, I would have gotten hit. So you have to wait. So this is it. This is typically a right. A pedestrian is supposed to have the right of way. But the reality is, it's something completely different. You don't have the right of way. This right doesn't exist in, in reality. And so you have to wait. And I will cross. And this should be safe for now. There we go. Well, the traffic is sort of backed up. and That's what, that's, that's what kind of makes this difficult. It's difficult, it's difficult to judge uh, where the traffic is, where the traffic isn't. So typically I avoid, but it's actually, I don't have to get anything large. I'm not carrying anything heavy. Uh, it's been cold the last few days, so even though my shorts are short sleeves, uh, it's a nice breezy, uh, this is about 7 degrees Fahrenheit out, so it's not bad at all. <laughs> at least, you know, I mean, it could be worse. So, I mean, what's good about this is I'm not wearing any heavy clothes, right? We're normally in the winter, when it's cold out, I'm wearing a heavy parka, wearing heavy boots, you know. But now, bang on. Anyways, uh... I'm more or less at my destination, so I will see you. I'm trying to vlog when I come out, but it depends. The sun is in the west. I'm walking to the east. That means the sun's going to be in the camera. I have to wait till I'm going vertical to the sun. Right? I have to go perpendicular to the sun in order to vlog. So that's not going to happen until I get almost back to my place around Victoria Park and Steels when I start going north again. Uh, so basically, I'll be going east for a fair bit. Just the way I, way I came back, then I'll go back east. Which, you know, back the way I came from. And then when I start going north again, that's when I can vlog. So, uh, that will be the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory, I'll speak to you as vlog. Alright, see you then.
am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say, can you see? Speech rules here at Democratic Earth.